Today I'm going to share my experience doing a course of rifaximin with neomycin for SIBO, so stay tuned. Hey there, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. To learn more about why your digestive symptoms are happening and what you can do about them, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I recently completed a three week course of rifaximin with neomycin for SIBO treatment, which is a standard SIBO treatment. So in today's video, I want to just really briefly talk about what SIBO is in case you don't know, and then share what happened to my symptoms over the three weeks I was on the treatment and also talk about what I'm doing post treatment. And my hope with this video is that you'll feel a little less anxious or worried about doing this potentially really useful treatment for yourself. And I also want to just talk a little bit about how these kinds of experiments can help illuminate what's happening in our gut. So let's get started. All right, super brief overview of SIBO. SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and basically is what it says. It's an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine. The trick is that there shouldn't be very much bacteria in your small intestine. And when bacteria overgrows there, it tends to mess up your gut motility or the speed that food moves through your digestion. So um, if it speeds it up, you're gonna have diarrhea. And if it slows down your motility, you're gonna have constipation. And SIBO is one of the most common causes, underlying causes of IBS. So that's why talking about SIBO is really important it's because it's a really common underlying cause of IBS symptoms, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, and so on. So I have likely had SIBO for many years. Um, if you've seen my video where I talk about my endometriosis and gut health journey, I'll leave a link for that so you can watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, my case of SIBO is a situation where another health condition um, screwed up my digestion and made it so that SIBO could develop. My worst gut symptoms started about six to seven years ago when my endometriosis got really bad and I had a tremendous amount of scar tissue and adhesions and things in my abdomen holding my guts tight and um, including attaching to my large bowel. And so I started having slow motility, which I think allowed bacteria to build up in my small intestine. I tested positive for methane SIBO in about 2017, and at the time I did some herbal treatments, and my symptoms did improve a little bit, and that was kind of where I left it. But not too long after, I had a relapse and my symptoms kept getting worse, and then all kinds of new symptoms started happening. So just about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I started working with a naturopath, and she wanted to treat me for SIBO. She's like, you probably still have it. And I tried some of the herbal options and found that I didn't tolerate them anymore. And so fast forward to just a couple of months ago, um, we decided to run another SIBO test and, and just to double check and see if that's what was really going on. And my methane levels on my SIBO test were really extremely high. And so we decided we were going to do a standard treatment protocol, the rifaximin plus the neomycin. And I was asked to take the rifaximin three times a day and the neomycin twice a day. And I started this protocol on February 13th. Now, a core idea in my teaching is that when we try something new, whether it's a supplement, a medication, or a dietary change, we want to be going into that process asking a question that we're trying to answer for ourselves so we can decide whether or not to continue with it or we learn more information about the edges of our unique situation. So my question here was, will the rifaximin and neomycin have an effect on my constipation? And um, I was also curious about some other symptoms. So I did make a list of symptoms that I wanted to track during my treatment protocol. And they included things like migraine headaches, joint pain, back pain flares, and hot flashes. These are some of the recent symptoms that I've been dealing with. Oh yeah, and reflux. So during my treatment protocol, I kept a little log um, just day by day to note anything that happened and what was changing and what was happening. I also recorded some short little video updates for you throughout this period of time. So let's take a look at uh, how that process unfolded for me. Hey there, so I am just getting started today to start my SIBO treatment that my naturopath prescribed for me. I've been waiting for a really long time because I don't have health insurance and I needed to order the generic form of rifaximin all the way from India. And so it's taken four or five or maybe even six weeks for it to get to me through customs. But it just arrived the other day. So today I've started my SIBO treatment. So I'm gonna be tracking how things go 
you know, every couple days giving you guys an update and letting you know how it's going. So um, here is, this is how the Rifaximin came. It came in these little foil packs. So um, I took the first one this morning. Here's crossing my fingers that this treatment regimen really helps me feel better and um, decreases the bloating and gas that is kind of ongoing and totally constant for me. And maybe it'll prove some other stuff too. So I'm excited to see what happens. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, just wanna give a quick update on my day three of my SIBO treatment program. So today is the third day that I've taken things and I did notice a little bit of stomach discomfort earlier today and I've been having a little bit of dry mouth, no big deal. But the really exciting thing that's happened today is that I had a piece of poop that sank. And that may not sound like a big deal, but as someone who tracks changes in bowel movements as a measure of people's health, this is a really significant thing for me. I have tried everything I can think of to get my poop to sink. Um, when it doesn't sink, this is an indicator that either fats aren't digesting well or there's too much gas in the stool. So today's uh, experience in the bathroom was a huge win for me and I'm super excited to keep you updated. So I'll check in again later. Good morning, everyone. Day five. Um, I'm waking up feeling really refreshed this morning after having a really, really bad headache last night at the end of day four. It kind of came on during the afternoon and um, got to just bad, bad levels. I had to go to bed early. I do sometimes get headaches. Um, it's not unusual, but um, I think they're probably connected to my SIBO treatment, to the antibiotics. So um, thought I'd share that all with you, but I feel a lot better this morning and it's a beautiful morning. So I'm out for my morning walk. I'll check in later. Hey there, Gut Voyagers. It's Amanda here and it's day 10 of my Rifaximin SIBO treatment. Um, I've continued to have really great bowel movements that are normalized far beyond my expectations. So that's great. Um, I haven't noticed really many other improvements. I guess my bloating is a little bit reduced. Um, I've also been highly distracted by a major case of poison oak in my left eye. I don't know if you can see that right now in the video, but um, that kind of triggered a major histamine problem over the weekend um, with some foods and, and whatnot. So I'm hoping with all that clearing up, I'm going to start to see a lot more improvement. So I'll keep you posted. Hey everyone, good morning. It's day 12 of my SIBO treatment and you can see it's a really sunny morning here. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to report that yesterday I had this really intense period of negative emotions. Kind of what I've been noticing is I'm sort of having what I call my greatest hits of symptoms. Um, I have had a major histamine flare over the last several days, but that cleared up um, with my poison oak. And then now I've got this anxiety, high emotional state that sometimes happens when I have symptom flare. So I'm not sure if this is happening due to the treatment or if it's just, this is my normal monthly fluctuation of things um, that's causing these symptoms. So anyways, that's the latest. Um, otherwise, I'm still having perfect BMs, super awesome. I'll check in again in another day or so. Hey everyone, day 13. I'm feeling a bit better today. Yesterday I was having a lot of just low grade nausea all day, but today I haven't had any of that and I feel pretty good. So that's all there is to say today. Hey there everybody, it's day 17 of my SIBO treatment and um, want to update you that in the last couple of days I've been having quite a bit of joint pain, so I'm not sure if that's related or not. And then my bowel movements have been continuing to be absolutely amazing until this afternoon um, when I had this something's gone wrong with my brain this afternoon. I don't know exactly what's happening, um, but it kind of triggered a little bit of a loose stool, which is the first time that's happened since I started. So that's the update for now. I'll be finishing my course, I think in a day or two, the pharmacy shorted me a couple of Rifaximin tablets. So I'm not going to quite have enough for 21 days, but I have another um, round ordered. And so I'm going to do a wrap up maybe tomorrow or the next day and we'll go from there. Okay, so that brings us up to date. And since I've finished the protocol just on Wednesday, today's Friday, 
Um, I have been prescribed a medication called Prucalipride, which is what's called a prokinetic. So a lot of SIBO relapses happen because the gut motility slows back down again um, once you stop the treatment. And um, the medication, the Prucalipride, helps speed that process up. There are some herbal alternatives. I have tried all of them. I don't tolerate them or they don't really do enough. So I'm at a point in my journey where I'm ready to try medications. I have not generally been in this position, but I am now. So I'm excited to see how I do with the Percalipride. Um, the other thing that's been kind of interesting is that towards the end of my SIBO protocol, I started having a lot more joint pain and back pain. And that's kind of continued uh, since I finished my protocol. So I'm not really sure what that means. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on that and keep trying to determine what exactly is going on there. I'm also continuing to have a little increase in my gut irritation and pain. I had kind of forgotten about this symptom during the treatment, which tells me that actually it had improved it. And certainly, you know, I had this question about does the rifaximin improve my constipation um, and IBS symptoms? And the answer is a resounding yes, it definitely helped. And this tells me that bacterial overgrowth is a huge part of my constipation problem. So this is super useful information for me. And it tells me that if I want to keep uh, working on this issue and improving myself a little bit, I have to keep focusing on that issue with what's right and what seems right to come next as I keep trying to heal myself. Figuring out these kinds of things are vital to figuring out what is going on with you and how to heal. And the only way to do this is to do really targeted experiments like, okay, I'm going to do this uh, medication protocol and see what happens, or I'm going to change my diet and see what happens. I'm going to change this supplement or add the supplement, see what happens. Um, and then you need to just make note of those things and keep track of them over time. So I know that I have farther to go with this issue. My naturopath is recommending a second course of rifaximin. All along she was suggesting I might need to do two or even three rounds of treatment. So I'm waiting for my next shipment of um, rifaximin from India. So once that shows up, I will get started and I can do another update later on. But for now, that's where things are at. Do you have any questions about SIBO treatment? Be sure and leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. So that's what happened during my SIBO treatment. I wondered if it would help my constipation and it absolutely did. Okay, now if you are someone who is struggling with not knowing why your symptoms are happening despite trying lots of different solutions, I would really love to help you. I'm currently interviewing people who are having this struggle because I'm in the process of designing a program to help. So if you feel like this is you, you are trying to figure out what the right foods are, the right supplements, the right diet, and you haven't been getting anywhere, I would really love to meet you. So I'm going to leave a link to schedule that interview with me down below this video. Or if you know someone who might like to talk to me, please forward them the link as well. And um, I will look forward to talking with you. I hope that this video helped you understand what SIBO treatment with rifaximin and neomycin is like, and also may help you feel a little more relaxed about trying this treatment if it's something your doctor has recommended. And if you liked this video, please be sure to click like, uh, drop me a comment or a question down below, or forward it on to somebody else who you think could use it. So I will look forward to seeing you all next time, and I wish you good health.